All right, and continue with the OS stuff here. So I did a few changes, or maybe a little bit more than a few changes, uh, from setting up audio and getting a larger font and all. Couldn't help myself, so mainly just lines in the make file. So I guess I'll look at that. Try to go through this. Uh, I added a fonts directory under the source folder. So if I just do that, go up, go to source. Yeah, so I put a fonts directory in there. I added a larger version of the Terminus font and I kind of changed the other ones to be the same, the similar naming. So the previous 16 and 18 height or point, however you say that. And I also added a 32 point font, but I have the BDF which was a, uh, well, I don't remember what that stands for anymore. <laughs> it's something data format. I don't know, bitmap, data format or something, files. That's what I've been using and converting my fonts from, just taking the, the bitmaps in there pretty much. Uh, so I added the 16, 18, and 32 in there. I have a little make file. I had a little C program to convert the BDF to the sort of assembly versions. And I added, you know, the fonts folder under there for that. I kind of changed a little bit how the assembly files are being done since I'm adding more. If I'm converting the fonts, I'm adding more assembly files when this runs, and I couldn't do that. I didn't find a good way to do that and have it work. Like, I don't know. <laughs> keep keep reassigning the value like within these make recipes. I didn't find a good way to do that. So I was like, I'm tired of thinking about this. I'll just put a, a shell for loop in here. Um, but I did at least have this set up right here to take all the font files in that directory, similar to the C files here. Um, and I haven't been using these, so I'm kind of probably just going to get rid of these right now. The temp and assembly file lines. Uh, make disk, instead of just being a plain name, changed it to a bin file so that my git ignore doesn't add it to the repo. That was a change. Uh, so I changed the assembly files thing here. I did. I took the find line that was up here, similar for the assembly extension or whatever, and I just made that. I put that in the for loop. So between backticks, it you know evaluates that, going through all the files that are in there that are assembly files. Since I added the fonts directory under the source directory, I have to set a max depth. Otherwise, find goes recursively. I didn't know that, so that was fun to learn and see what was wrong. But I'm just changing it to use, you know, two dollar signs to make one dollar sign. So it takes this file as a sort of shell variable and then it just works the same as it did before. I just moved this stuff into a for loop for this. OK, I can get rid of that new tag there. Yeah, they can make additional files. So I have to do this at runtime to pick those up. C is the same. These are all the same as it was before. Uh, key mu I kind of changed. <laughs> I enabled KVM, which meant I had to enable virtualization within VMware, which is what I'm running this under. Otherwise, that wasn't an option, but it showed up when I did that. So that makes it run a bit faster and more stable as far as like timing purposes with RTC. So I'm probably just going to keep that because it's just, for me, it's extra performance, a little closer to a native or bare metal. Still doing monitor to standard I.O. Uh, memory I said explicitly just so I can guarantee I have a certain amount, although I think by default it should have 128 meg. I'm going to set it. Just anyway, for audio, I'm using ALSA on this Linux VM. You can use Pulse Audio or something if you need, but I had to use ALSA, so these last two lines are for that. And you have to do sort of machine for the PC speaker specifically, PC speak dash audio dev equals whatever this ID is. So if this was like ID blah, then this would be blah, right? I just named them also, so that's the ID there. And you can find that if you do the QEMU system, you know, whatever you're doing here. So I386, I think it's dash audio dash help. That'll tell you what's available. I had to install a package for that personally. Um, which was, let's just do dash I. I don't know if it was audio or, uh, QEMU, yeah. So I, I had to install this package on mine, but it's probably different for other distros and stuff. But there was also ones for uh, like Pulse Audio and Pipewire and stuff. I just did also. So yours may differ, you know, probably will differ. So keep that in mind, but those are all the changes for that. Uh, the clean thing here, I just put all these on one line. That's all I did. So I made a new program. 
which just has a make file. So I'm running make within the font directory to sort of make that as needed. Put that as a uh, prerequisite for the fonts. And that basically, this just takes all the fonts. It just passes it to the program that this makes, which I call BDF2ASM. So it passes the fonts to that and then moves the font assembly version into the source directory. So in source, we have, you know, these tur dash fonts, and those came from the BDF fonts within the source fonts directory. So, you know, it's just converting these. I'm not going to go through this. It was just a, a thing I wrote, and it's not the best, but I can at least look at it, right? This is only like 150 lines. It could be better, right? I just wrote this. Um... <laughs> And a coffee fueled rage as I was getting annoyed with trying to get fonts to work. And I was like, you know what? Instead of manually going through Vim macros and stuff, I'll just write a program to convert it. So it just reads. I basically, I use fgets here to just search for a substring in the file and read until we get to that point. Uh, you pass it a BDF file. It opens input and output, sets the name. So I'm writing the name to a file. It would probably help if I like showed one of these, right? Not include, let's go to source, we'll go to, because I changed the other ones as well. So if we look at U18N, these are a little different now, right? I'm just writing these three lines here. I'm writing the font width and height, which I grab from the BDF file, which I search for a font bounding box. It would help if I had like three things open here, wouldn't it? <laughs> but that's all right. Uh, let's do tur u 18 n So this is how the file looks, right? We have the sort of metadata, we have encoding metadata, we have the bitmap bytes themselves, and we have, you know, each character and their bitmaps. So I'm just picking up the characters 32 to 126 or 127 approximately. So I start with space and I go down to 127, I'm just grabbing the sort of ASCII range there. That's all I'm doing in this program. So I'm searching for font bounding box, I grab that. Then I do, what do I do? String token to get the, the width and the height. So the next two values over here. Do -do -do. And that goes to these. I just grab those, put them in this line. And then according to how big the height is, and if the width is sort of eight or less pixels, if it's one byte, or if it's more than eight, and it's gonna be two bytes for a word, I'm multiplying by, you know, height times one or two, subtract two bytes for these two bytes for this file padding, and then I just, you know, copy the bitmaps. That's all this is doing here. Really, really simple. In my opinion, it's not good code, but it works. <laughs> so I have to back up a line here. I find where space starts and I back up because some BDF files have like a Unicode characters at the start or other things. And I just wanted space number 32 and, and forward. So I find that line, I back up before it, and then I read it again in a loop for all the characters here. I'm just grabbing, <clears throat> grabbing the space after start character. So it writes space for the first one. Then I grab the encoding number, write the number. Right. That's what I'm doing there. And then I write the lines of the bitmap. So I read until I get the bitmap line. And I grab all those bytes and put them under define byte or define word so that NASM can pick them up and assemble correctly. So if it reaches the end character, if it's at the end of the character, then it, it breaks and it leaves. And I am doing that. I know I leave here, I leave right here. So if I grab, if the encoding for the character is 126 or tilde, that's the end of the ASCII range. So I just leave when we reach after that point. So in the, in the terminus files, they, a lot of them go from 126 to 160. I don't really care about that. So I just leave when I reach that point. That's how this overall while loop lint ends. And then I had a final one sort of for the underline for the OS when I'm drawing stuff. That's sort of the under the cursor line. So I just add one extra character on the end, call it cursor line. It's the same height as the other characters, just filled with, filled with zeros. And then the last line is just all Fs. So it'll just be one single bitmapped line at the bottom.
And then I had the sector padding bytes, which is down here. I had these two lines, sector padding, if you can read those. My head, I don't know. <laughs> I'll move it up a bit. I'm adding these two lines here. which just gets the current size to the next 512 byte boundary, then subtracts wherever we currently are in the file, and just, you know, it'll fill it with zeros. I'll just delete those. So that's all that's doing. Size mod 512 plus 512, current size minus that. And then add, yep, and that gets the next 512 byte boundary, and I put times, close the file, so that's all it is. That's a very bad coverage of it, but that's all that's doing, and it ends up making those files, and if you do make, it makes the files, it makes all the font files there, so that's good. Um, other changes were in third stage, loosely. Yeah, I just have a string that I added here to set the initial font. And where I'm filling out the font ID, finding what font file I want to load. I was doing term U18 in hard-coded here before, so I am hard-coding a different name, dash 32 for 32 point. But this is what it was before, so I'm gonna remove that line. Now I'm using a larger font. So I'm just saying, if we're searching through the directory for the font we wanna do, the name's not gonna be null, and if we found the font here, then you know we'll, we'll have the font ready. So it'll load it up. But nothing else changed, I'm just changing what font is loaded. And since I wrote the files differently, that's how they work in the OS currently. So it'll find it, I mean it makes them alright. And it'll find the font and load it how it normally works, and hey we have a bigger font. And so this is 32 point. The one in my terminal I think I made slightly larger, it's either 34 or 36. But this one here is, you know, 32, so. Hopefully it's a lot easier to read now. If this is still too small within this, you know, OS window, let me know. It might be, I don't know. <laughs> so if this is still too small, then I'll find other bitmap fonts or work on an actual BDF file parser or a PCF or something, some other font standard if there's not large bitmap fonts available. But if this is easy to read, that'll be, that'll be fine. Um, I guess I still have a remaining bug for the cursors left when you press enter. But you know, that's where the underline is, the last thing that I write. At 127, that's what that line is. So that seems to be working all right. But that was the only, you know, changes that I did, or at least that I remember doing between <laughs> last video and this one over the past, uh, past couple days. Uh, oh, make disk. So I just added the new font to make disk. That's all that is. That's what I forgot. So we had term U16N, I replaced the M with the dash because I got the files and I just added this one. So that's added in there. And the files I got from, I think it was SourceForge or whatever, I just searched for Terminus fonts and downloaded a zip and that's, uh, yeah, Terminus font 4.491 and that came with all these. So I just copied U18 and U16 in for normal and U32 because that was the largest one they had, so. Although they do have some other ones in there that might be interesting or, or different for code pages and stuff. I don't know. But anyway, I'm using Terminus fonts. If you have a suggestion or you know some other really good uh, bitmap fonts, let me know. I can try and add them in. Not take credit for them, but, you know, have them as options. Like I read Gohu font was one or some other things. But uh, regardless, those should be all the changes I did. So, yep. So we can get on to the file system and I can quit uh, procrastinating that, right? So we'll need an open file table, which will link into an open inode table of sorts within the kernel, and a running process, which I don't have those, so there's just only one technical process right now. That'll have, should have its own open file table. Right now I'm gonna forego that until I make actual processes. Um, so they'll just take from the open file table that the kernel or the system has. And a file descriptor, the FD number, is going to be an offset within that open file table, which will just be an array of structs. So I can try to lay out the structs, I guess. The open inode table will just be inodes. There won't be any special format. But the file table uh, will be. So the inodes have a reference count, which is what I forgot if I added or not, but I do, so I don't need to add that. 
but I will add a file table sort of struct here. I'll add open file table T, be a little verbose with it. So I will not be adding an FD number because that'll kind of be the offset within an array that an open file corresponds to. But I will have other things such as an address, which I may make a pointer. I'm not sure yet. It may be better just make this a pointer, in which case we'll make it byte addressable. So this would be where a file is loaded. So we'll see um, starting or base. I guess I'll put base. Base virtual address file is loaded to. So when we call like the open syscall or something, we open a file, it's going to load it from the data that are in these inodes for the file, or well, the, the singular inode, the extents. You know, we'll look at the, the blocks that it's at on disk and the data blocks in the file system. We'll load the file to an address, and that address is going to be, well, wherever pages are allocated, I guess. So that'll be from the virtual memory manager. But the address returned from that, <laughs> the starting one, Hopefully these are all contiguous. I don't have to worry about that. But assuming they're contiguous, that'll be this. So we can say, you know, maybe this will be at virtual address 20,000. Um, that's what this address will be. And we can read from that address to get the data for the file. So I'm also gonna have an offset. This will be sort of the current file kernet, the current file position for this open file. So if the offset is zero, this will be used for stuff like um, seek syscalls from like seek start and seek end and seek cur, right? The wince values. So seek will sort of set this offset uh, offset from this base address. And something like ftel would just return this offset value. So it might return like 30, and that would mean, I'm just gonna do byte addressing. So that would mean 30 bytes into this address. Or well, zero based, right? So I guess 31 bytes, but you know, close enough. <laughs> It'll just be the offset value from this address from the start of the file once it's loaded there. Uh, otherwise, this will just be null and it won't be valid. Yeah, so I'll, I'll need a way to link in where the actual file data is, and I'm going to read the inode for that. So I'm going to have an open inode table, but I'm going to have sort of a link to that table and that will be with, I think, an inode pointer. So that'll be, this will be the, uh, the backing inode. I, um, that doesn't make much sense. I'll put the underlying inode for the file. This will be an element. This will be an element in the open inode table. So we'll have that. I know there's one or two other things that go in here. I don't remember at the moment what they are. Um, I think a reference count. I'm not sure if I need much else than that. I'll add a reference count though. So if multiple things have the same file open, it depends where it's called from. I, if we have something like a file dupe, which might be, is it this? My man pages look bad within a vim here. So, you know, like this is messed up, which isn't good, but if we use something like dupe, it gives you the same, it's supposed to give you the same file descriptor. So for something like that, maybe it's f dupe, not file dupe, but for something that gives you the exact same descriptor, we can increment this reference count. The reference count for the inode will be how many instances of the file is open. The reference count in the open file table entry will be this specific entry not necessarily for the file, but every time this increases, like the reference count for the inode would increase. But if a process that doesn't use dupe, it just calls open like two or more times on the same file, you'd make separate open file table entries and it would have a separate file descriptor returned. The reference count would still be like one for each of those. It wouldn't increase. But if you use something like dupe and get the exact same file descriptor, then this would increase. So if I decide to go with that, then I guess I'll have this available. I'm not really gonna be using this for a while until I find valid reasons, which I'm sure there are. I just I haven't gone too deep into stuff, so. Okay, so that'll be a reference count there. Used for a dupe or similar syscalls. 
That might be all that I'm doing with this. That'd be one. We'll have a the I know it's 64, but this is just a pointer. This be 4, 8, 12, 13 bytes. I might add padding on here. Just to fill it out to like 16 bytes, just because. <laughs> So the size of should be, I mean, it's not packed, so I guess it'll be four bytes by default. Um, I could make it packed. So let's say size of should equal 16 bytes. The inode should be 64 as well. All right. I think that's what I'm going to go with. I feel like there was something else that I'm missing here. I might look that up right quick and get back. <laughs> okay, yeah, there was one more thing. And that's <laughs> like if you call open. I'll just put this here. When you call like the open syscall, you have, you know, the path to to the file that you're opening, and you have some flags. Like if you want to make it, you'll call it with create, or if you want it to be like read or write only, I think it's read, read, write, and write only. I think those are those, and there's other ones too, right? Truncate and other things, but. So these are like flags. I mean, they aren't separate. Um, they aren't separate parms, they're like ord together, but. I'm gonna store those flags within the open file table entry here. So I don't know how big we want those to be. I can make it 16 bit. I can make it 8 bit if we're only going to have like 8 flags and I do, you know, power of 2 for all those. I'll probably, I guess I'll do 16. It's kind of wasteful though. But otherwise this would be weird padding because we have 3 extra bytes. This is 4, 8, 12. This is a pointer. I guess a pointer takes up four, doesn't it? Because we're on 32 bits. So that's a 32 bit pointer, right? Yeah, so that would be four, eight, 12, 16 bytes. So it doesn't really matter. I, I could do 32 then. That'll leave a bunch of room. So four, eight, 12, 16, that'd be 20. Let's do 12 for padding. There we go. So then, then it should be 32 bytes. Because I can do math, and my math was definitely not correct before. I read UNAT, not pointer. These will be open flags, e.g. O create, O read, O write, read. The only... I mean, I guess I can go with these sort of flag definitions. I don't know if I want to name them different things or not, but... I guess we can go with those. But that's all I'm going to add for here. Um, yeah, I think I've yeah, previously mentioned the inode table is just going to be these inodes. The only thing I was going to add would maybe be a reference count. I think there's separate metadata that Unix or Linux or other things add to the inodes. So they have like metadata, a header, and then the inode. But for me, if, if I can help it, I'm just going to be simple and just have them be the inodes themselves as the inode table. And I'm stalling for time because I don't know what I want to do next. <laughs> uh, we can go ahead and like malloc some of this in the kernel and see if stuff still works. At least to start. They won't be filled out, but that's all right. We can malloc stuff in the kernel. Did I make a mistake? I did. At 98. Did I miss a semicolon somewhere? These all have semicolons. I don't think I would have missed that. Did I get rid of one down here? I don't think so. Oh, this. I might have got rid of that somehow. But okay. There's no reason it wouldn't still boot, but sometimes you just got to make sure, right? For your sanity. So we'll go ahead and set that stuff up here. I don't know where I'll put it. I should make, you know, separate functions for setups and stuff so I don't have to do this and it looks and reads better. I know definitely before I do all this stuff, I probably should. So yeah, let's set it up like, 
maybe before the colors and stuff so I know if something's wrong. Because right after we do malloc, we can start using malloc, right? So I'll do that here. So let's set up open file table and open inode table. Let's do kernel system. We'll have to add syscalls and things for flags and everything. Let's make a function here, I guess. Or in it or something. They can be separate, it's fine. If I want like one variable or something to refer to these things, I either have to add more stuff to the global addresses or I have to make these global and available in other places. I suppose if this is only in the kernel, it doesn't really matter because other things aren't going to be referencing these. We'll have syscalls, yeah, but the syscalls will call into the kernel, so it won't matter. Like a, a user land code isn't going to know anything about the open file table later, right? It won't care. So it's really, it shouldn't be that big of a deal, but I don't like globals. But in this case, I might need to do a global or otherwise. You know, I'm trying to think like we don't have public stuff in C and I can't do global. <laughs> I can do extern, but that means it comes from outside this file. So that's not really right. I guess it would have to be global. That's kind of sad. That's okay though. If there's a better solution, then we can we can get to it later, hopefully. <laughs> but I'll set these up here. Uh, which that's what these are gonna be. I guess I don't need to label them. Oh well. So we'll have open file table t, which it doesn't find because I don't have that open. But we'll have a pointer oft or something. I don't know. I don't want to type that, all that out every time. Yeah, I can, it's fine. We'll have this and we'll have inode table, except this will just be an inode T. Okay, we'll have these. I'll have functions. We'll have, yeah, init, open, file table, and I'll have in it open inode table. So those can use data for malloc, right? Because I can call malloc and it should use these values. I think, so that should be okay. We'll find out though. So I should have these here. Those don't take in anything. Those are void. Let's do that. And I'll put these down here at the bottom of the file. Just so it's easier to work with these later, I think. Really can't type today. All right. I don't know why that goes all the way back there. Let's just say we malloc a certain number of bytes and we'll have it here. So open file table. I don't know if you're supposed to cast malloc or not. I don't remember. I don't think it matters because it'll be a void pointer being returned. So we'll malloc um, size of open file table T. And we'll say we start with 256 entries. I don't know. Maybe we'll do that. We can have like a maximum number of entries. That could be another another global. Let's have or a define or something. Well, we could increase it later though. If we, if I ever make like a realloc function, that would come into play if we need to expand the table, which we probably will eventually because that's not very many files. So let's say we have max max open files maybe. I'll just set that to 256 to start off with. And I'll have a similar one for inodes. So this will be multiplied by max open files. And that just mallocs, that doesn't set it, so. I'm just going to initialize stuff. So it'd be better if I had a C alloc function, which I don't. So I have to do 
Uh, stuff like this, but it's just going to be zero, right? So I think that'll be okay. I think that's a good way to do it. Not a good way, but that's one way to do it. So we want open inode table as well. And this will be an inode T. It'll start empty. And we'll have this be max open inodes. So that'll also be 256, that this needs to be inode T. So how do we know how many we have open to know if we've reached the end? I guess if the next FD, well, we need at least for inodes. What am I trying to say? <laughs> we need to keep track of the current number that's actually open. I'm not sure if we need it for the file table because we could check on you know the index if it's going to pass this number or equal this number because zero based. Uh, for inodes, we might need to keep track, but it might be easier to just have one for both. You know, current open inodes. We'll say that'll start at zero. Or what I can do is not set these and set them in the init functions. That might be good. Although it won't keep the state because I'm passing the value. So never mind. I'd have to pass in pointers. Passing pointers in places, especially in the kernel here, paging gets iffy and I can have page faults pretty easily. So. I can just set them there, that's fine. These will these will be updated, like in the open syscall, so that should be okay. So does that work so far? It does not. Redefinition. Did I call it the same thing? I did. Current open files, or FDs. Okay. Uh, okay, so... I can still print stuff, which is important. See, this block number is lower than it was before. 28515. This number is lower than it was before because we have those, you know, those things that are now allocated. So I just wanted to make sure it booted, even though those were allocated, and we don't have a uh, memory leak anywhere. Okay. Not so far, at least. So where do I want to go with that? Setting up the open syscall, I guess, open and close, or what have you. So we'll go into... It's just called wrappers, maybe? Isn't that what I called it? That's under include. What do I have here? It's just called wrappers and numbers. Well, I'll add it to both. Maybe inside of numbers. Well, yeah, because this includes numbers. Let's go to, let's go to that first, because I want to define the flags, right? And that would probably be better in here. But I can add this here. Define it as seven. And this will be open. And we'll also have an enum here. Maybe I'll just define them. I don't know if I want to make it a type def or not. It doesn't really matter. I can make it a type def. We'll have this be open flags, <laughs> for lack of a better word. So we'll have o create. I don't really care what the values are. We'll have o read only. I guess we'll separate read and write. Maybe have execute later on if we want to write it. XOR. Execute, isn't that the, the thing? W at X. Oh, read write. I don't know. What else is there? Like append? I'm not sure if that's what it is. Uh, yeah, my man pages are not good on this for some reason. So I'm not going to do that. We'll do man open. Open to. Yeah, we have O append. Okay, so we'll do append. I have a bunch of other stuff. We'll do create. We'll do direct. I'll refuse to read these, so I'll get it wrong later. That's okay. <laughs> I won't be doing it to POSIX spec or anything. Ensure that this creates the file. Well, we'll try to do that. No A time. Path. Truncate, that was a different one. If it already exists and it allows writing, it'll be truncated to length zero. I can maybe do truncate as well. They don't have read or write only, it looked like. I guess it doesn't matter. I might do read or write only though. Yeah, see these. It must include one of these, okay. Read only, write only, or read write, yeah. Okay, so I'll add truncate.
So, you know, create, read only, write only, read and write. Uh, write at end of file position. We'll do this. Um, always write at end of file position because that's kind of what that is. Truncate file size and position to zero on open. I think that's how I understand these. One of three required. I'll do that for these as well. So one of these needs to be there. So that can be things we can test for later with test cases. If I actually set up test cases. <laughs> Okay, so we'll have some open flags there. We have seven of those. We can set up wrappers as well. So this call numbers is here. Let's do right, let's do open. I guess I can pass that back. Int32 open. So what is it? This will return the file descriptor or negative one, I suppose. So it returns. FD or negative one on error. So FD of three plus is the first three are supposed to be for streams, standard in, out, and error, I guess. Maybe I'll hard code those to not happen and only start at three or something. So what do we want to pass in? We want to pass in a path and the flags. So that would be path or file path. Say it's a file path and we'll have flags. And then flags will be an enum, which is an int, I believe. We'll do an int for those. So we'll have this, set result to negative one, turn result, and we'll do a similar thing for the assembly code here. We'll call int 80, except this will be syscall open. And we'll say the path is going to be in B. And the flags will be in C. Just like everything else I'm writing. <laughs> and yeah, EAX will have the result on return and we'll overwrite that value and we'll return that. Okay, so that's not too bad. That should be all right. If I didn't make a mistake, that's just negative one. Needs to be equal. Okay, so path is undeclared because I called it file path. Maybe you actually focus and read what you're writing. I don't, I just write and then let the compiler tell me how wrong I am. That's, that's the good way to live your life, right? Probably not. <laughs> it still boots, that's all that matters. I don't know why it wouldn't, but it still boots, so, okay. We'll go to I think it's interrupt census calls. Yeah, all right. I'll put it down in here. I need to add it to the syscall table. Syscall open. I probably could write code to like write this, like a function to take all the numbers and like write this, but I don't want to think about that right now. I'm not sure how that would work. So <laughs> we'll just do that. We'll say we have a syscall open. Which is going to be void because all these are void. I could have these like return a value instead of just doing void, and that might take care of filling in EAX with values. That might be something to add later. So I'm going to forget I said that, but that might be something to look into later. It'd be better. Or something like Linux where it passes in like a C struct with um, the state, like the task state segment, and you know, a full context for processes and things and the register values and all that. That would be good to have. Since all I'm doing is assuming those are implicitly available because we push everything and call it. Which is probably not good. And I went down here because of this. That needs to be incremented because I would have forgotten that. That's why. I know I went down there for a reason. So let's say this is open. Open system call. Open a file. So I know ultimately we will do this. 
effectively. I think what I can do also is set up the first three values within the open file table, because 0, 1, and 2 will be available. They won't be actual files with inodes, though. I know I'm like, they're supposed to be streams. I don't really have a thing for streams, which isn't great. Um, I mean, I don't have a C runtime or anything either, right? But I don't think standard in-out and air have, have a, actual inodes behind them. But what I can do is at least, I think, allocate or save their positions for FDs 0, 1, and 2 for in-out and error. So I can do that here. So this is this. It'll be 0. You won't be able to write to them because it'll be 0. I can say, I guess I can just do that by saying the current number, right? Because I have the current open files as 0. I'll just set that to 3 or 2. Well, we can do 3. So it can start at that position within the array. And the array pointer will be this, open file table. So 3 would be the first position because it's 0 base. That would be free. And I'll say FD012 reserved for standard in, out, error. If I set those up later. But they won't have inodes. They won't count as inodes in my opinion. So I won't do that. I guess you could call open on those though. I haven't tried. That's like weird. Unix and C stuff. I haven't tried that. What happens if you call open on standard end? Does it work? Do you just get another like handle to that? I guess you would. It'll go through device specific code for streams and stuff. Maybe pipes. I don't know. Uh, but okay. So what do I? What am I supposed to be doing here? <laughs> I know I need to have an FD. So I'll just init that to. I don't know negative one, right? So right now it's going to be an error. It won't. It won't be filled out. And I'll have to get this code to move stuff in. I know we'll overwrite. We will have a path. We do need a path. So that'll start out as null, and we'll overwrite that with B, I think, was the path. And we need flags. So flags will overwrite with C. That's what that was supposed to be. So that'll fill in the parms. Okay, then what do we need to do? <laughs> I guess I need to check the flags and if it, well, I'd have to check if we get the I know. So I have to set up a lot of other actually infrastructure code before this, I just realized. Because to be able to open something from a file path, we have to be able to like traverse that file path <laughs> and grab the I node. Like if we had, uh, if we start at root, a path would be like, you know, this would be root. I have like a, you know, folder A, folder B, you know, file, file one. If we want to get this and open this file, we have to traverse this path. So we kind of need the root inode to exist and we need to grab the thing from the root inode and then go into its data for its inode and go through until find this. And okay, so I got to set up a lot of other infrastructure first. So that'll be fun. <laughs> I can try to lay out like a skeleton here so I know what to do later though. That would be good, right? Um, that doesn't count relative paths either. What if we have like, uh, this is the current one, that's one. You know, we can like do this too, which the dot dot would be going up. That doesn't do anything. This would be going up again, back into here, going up, going to here. And that would sort of be resolved to, uh, you know, file C being above folder B, I think. So that would just be resolved to this, I think. So yeah, I'll have to make something to like evaluate the path from a relative path, and I'll have to make something to traverse a path to grab the inode at the end of it, right? At the end of the path. Let me put that, I'm gonna forget these things. So I'll say make functions to, let's say resolve a relative path into an absolute uh, final path. I don't know. <laughs> G dot 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 would be two parents folders up. And we'll make functions to traverse a path 
and grab the last files inode at the end of that path. Folder A, folder B, file one would grab the inode for file one. All right, so these things I'll need to do, they won't be in this system call, but I'll need to remember to do those. So I'll put them here. So a skeleton would be, I guess, get inode if it exists or file at end of path. So we'd have to do that. So if not exist, check if flags or contains, it'd be and. So anyway, check if flags contains o create. Just do this. Check if flags is o create. Um, if not, error in return. So if inode doesn't exist and flags does have o create, create file, including new inode and inode bitmap. So we have, to, we have to do a bunch of stuff for a file. If we make a file, we have to create the inode. We have to create or set the bit within the inode bitmap. I'll do update. Update inode bitmap and update the data bitmap. And we also have to write to the data blocks. So write to inode blocks for the new inode, write to data blocks for new data. And that would have well, we wouldn't have any data for a file. If we're making a directory, which I don't know, I guess I would call this for a directory as well. How would we know? Is there flags we do for that? That might be a separate, that might be a separate syscall or something to make a directory. I might worry about that later. Put that here. Because <laughs> if we're going, if we, make a file, the inode can have the file type. I cannot lay all, lay all this out before I work through it because there's too much info, but I thought I had a file type. Yeah, the type here. So this, this file type in the inode can be like a number for directory or a number for a normal file or a pipe or a stream or something later if we want a special device. But I'm not sure how I would grab that info if the file doesn't exist yet. That might have to be like a special flag or something. If I'm calling open to make a directory. So maybe I call open with ocreate and it makes a directory. I don't know. Um, that might be something. That might be the simplest solution, to be fair. Or we just make a normal file. Uh, maybe add special o flag for o directory or similar. I'll keep that open. So if it doesn't exist and it has ocreate, want to make it, which would mean a new inode, updating the blocks and the data blocks. Uh, directory data would be dot and dot dot. I don't think a file would have any new data. So that should be it for that. We have to make a file. So add to open inode table, if not there yet. Add to open file table, if not there yet. Return FD, which is index of open file table position. I think that would be it. If the file does exist, it will have already been created. But that would be where this not there yet is. We would search the tables, and if it's not there, we would add. If it is there, we would increment. I guess I'll do this. If already exists in table, increment ref count in inode. Increment ref count in table entry. 
Is that all we need to do? <laughs> Which will have a buttload of work behind it. I think that's a rough skeleton of what we can do for open. And close could be kind of similar. I know I haven't done work yet, but writing documentation makes me think I've done work to my brain, so that's good. <laughs> we could add something for close. And read, write, and seek, just not fill them out yet. I guess I'll do that so I don't forget to do it later, right? Let's do that. Let's do close, read, and write, and seek. I won't do L seek, it'll be regular seek, because I have the foresight of many decades not doing an operating system that needs backwards compatibility, which has its perks. So that is nice. But if I lay it out well enough, I think the data could describe itself, so I'll know, you know, through this logic flow, I'll at least be able to knock stuff out and have it make sense within a wider context. Unlike when I normally start and don't know what I'm doing for the whole time, at least here I'll know where to start, so that's good. <laughs> when I'm not rambling about not doing stuff. So these will be close, this will be close system call, close and open file. These will be empty, but that's fine. Read, write, seek would be a three. Read, um, read bytes from an open file to a buffer. And we would have writes. Writing's gonna be interesting too, because if we update a file and it's larger than it previously was, we'll have to allocate and mark like more bits is in use in the data bitmap and fill in more data blocks, which means we'd have to search like a free list or something to find the next data block that's free. But I guess that's what the bitmap's for. Maybe that won't be that bad. But it depends. There might be, you know, there's full potential for fragmentation depending on the implementation of this write syscall. So that will be interesting and probably not very fun, but it might be. <laughs> write bytes to an open file from a buffer. We'll see, I got a lot of stuff to think about. I thought I was gonna be able to get more done, but I have to, I have to think about things. I'm not sure how I'm gonna take these. <laughs> uh, update file. Update and open files position. We'll say, yeah. Okay. So we don't have some of these numbers, right? Yep, that makes sense. Current undeclared. Yeah, okay. So we need these, these things to be defined. And that'll be syscall numbers. So we'll have open. Uh, this will be close. This will be read and write and seek. Ooh, then we have 10, zero to 10, which makes 11. Nice. Which means I'll update the max syscalls here as well. Okay, so write is a redeclaration. Is this call numbers? It has five. Oh, I already had write. I already had write? Okay. Oh, I did, but it only works for writing to the terminal. Uh, I already had write. Why didn't I read that? I don't know. I'm dumb sometimes. Well, we'll have to update write, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah, I already, I already had write here. So open, close, read, and seek. Okay. But I'll move it below here, since I can do that with this. Okay, let's just call numbers. I don't need write twice. So that means I wanted control X, not Z. I'll decrement those. And I'll decrement this number. 
for syscall dispatcher, and it doesn't work. Undeclared, did you mean syscall open? I did not. But really, it, since the compiler knows that I make these typos, why can't it just fix the typos for me? You know? Psycall sounds pretty cool, though. It's an alternative game, right? It's like Psychonauts, but not. Unused variable? Well, yeah, I know that. Current undeclared kernel. FD. Yeah, I'm not using FD. That's true. Well, we can return FD. So that would make that used. I'm not using current, oh. Because I was going to set this maybe down there and I didn't. So that's three. Oh, I should set those up as well, yeah. So, okay. So kernels and what, two. So these variables here that, that I have as global in the kernel, I, I'm gonna wanna be able to refer to those, at least only have one handle to the open file table or know how many entries we have open in these tables, right? So I want to refer to those so I can have those within uh, these functions here in the syscall handler. Even though I think the only place using system calls is the kernel, so that shouldn't matter, but let's check anyway. Yeah, let's say syscalls.h. So the only thing that includes that is the kernel. Okay, so that makes my life easier. I don't have to worry about that. But inside these functions that need to refer to those, I'm going to have extern variables, which I think extern means it's referred to elsewhere. So I should be able to do this. And it should pick up that that's the same variable as this one over here. I think that's how C works. I haven't used these extensively, so but I'll put in here from kernel.c. And that is a pointer, so... We'll have that, we'll have the max open files, I think. And that is... I could just copy this stuff. That would be easier, wouldn't it? <laughs> This is extern as well, except this doesn't have a value. Okay, that way those are available in here and we can use them, which will be handy, because we're gonna add stuff to those values. We're gonna check them, so when we, when we make something, like an entry in the open file table, I'll have to update or check these values, right? I mean, this will be the base. And then when we add the data, if we go over the maximum amount, we'll have to reallocate the table to a larger value. And we'll have to update the open file count and other stuff. Oh, it doesn't like that. Well, yeah, they're unused. They're extern, though. Unknown type name, because it's T. Unknown type name inode, ooh, okay. So it doesn't know what the type diffs are. So I need those here, that's all right. because so I just have definitions there. That's the one time I'm actually using header files correctly for the definitions. I forgot I could call make from vim as well. That did make it though. It just says they're unused, that's okay. Uh, go back to where I was. That's okay. I'll have open inode table just to silence the warnings. We'll have max open files. And current open files. And the same for the inodes. Okay, return with a value and function returning void. Oh, that's true. 
I like how that's a warning because <laughs> it knows it's going to use like EAX or whatever anyway. Just making all the mistakes today. Well, I put return. Well, otherwise it's not used. That's fair. Um, this is what I did for returning, right? Yeah. So since it'll return with an EAX by default because it sees ABI or FFI or whatever, we'll put this as FD. Oh, there we go. I might put that in a register, but as long as it ends up in EAX when it returns, that should be okay. Okay, there we go. And it still runs. I mean, I'm not calling that for, you know, system call or anything yet, but it runs. So we're gonna have to have, uh, have we're gonna have to have some other code before, like doing this stuff and loading. So I can try to set that stuff up now, maybe. I don't like how this looks. There we go. Okay, so resolving a path, functions to traverse a path. I might put these within the file system implementation because that would be, that makes sense that that's where they would go. Resolve a relative path. I guess we could send that and call that every time regardless because we won't know if we send it a relative path or not. So I'd have to call this every single time. And that would maybe call this. Well, it would call this after. Yeah, because so we'd resolve the path and then we'd walk the path to get the last files inode, and then we'd add all this stuff. Yeah, that makes sense. Put this here after variable definitions. Okay, so how can we start this if wanted? I might get to this on the next video because I got to think through some stuff and it's been over an hour. So yeah, it's been a little over an hour that I've been doing this and I got to think through some things so I could add on to this video, but I know this is boring and I'm, I'm not doing much, but I want to keep these shorter in my sanity uh, available. So <laughs> uh, I got to think through how I want to do this because I've done this before, but I want to write better code than I did before and make it simpler. So I got to think through that a little bit more. Um, but I have the layout that I kind of want to go with. I'm kind of going to do this. So the next part of this, I'm going to probably make these functions for making and resolving paths, which means I'll probably have to add code if I don't have it, you know, to load inodes to memory and then walk through the data for the file. So walk through the inodes data blocks to find what we're referring to and load that file's inode and, and so on and so forth to kind of walk the paths. But resolving a relative path, I don't think would be bad, but We'll see. I need some kind of work or scratch area to load things to intermittently. Like our current inode, I need an area in memory. I have to load the current working directory, right? I need to load that inode um, and also have the name that we can update in the shell. But I need to load that inode to memory and then walk through its data blocks according to what we have here. So a directory's data is basically, you know, the, the file names, the directory entry name portion for the files. And then when we find the one that is here, if we find it, if we don't, we can send an error back. But if we find it, we take the ID in that inode and we go and load that inode to memory. And then we walk through its stuff for the next thing in the path and then so on and so forth till we get to the last one. And when we can't load any more, then we know we found this inode. We have that available. And then we go on and do the rest of this. I don't think that'll be bad. I just don't know right now how I want to do that. So apologies for a very bad, boring <laughs> episode. Hopefully it's not too bad, but I just, I got to think through this. So uh, yeah, if this ends up being like real short or crappy, I'll add stuff onto the end of this, depending on what I do. But if not, and this is the end, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Trying to get back in the swing of things. Uh, yeah, I'll write more paper notes so I remember more too. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Really do appreciate it. Hope you have a good night or evening or day, wherever you are. And uh, cheers, right? Good rum. Okay, let's continue on with the OS dev. So where am I at? The syscalls, syscall open, wherever I last was. Thinking, trying to think things through here. Researched a little bit more on C, sort of storage classifiers and things. So I think extern is an all right use here. It's more used for headers, but 
this saying that, you know, these are in another file that they're gotten from, but I can still use these as long as they have the same definition somewhere else. It'll use those as where they're actually defined and put in memory and stuff. So just reminding myself of that. <laughs> that should be an okay use. So I need to make these functions here to go through open. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to add some variables though as, as helpers to make things a little bit easier inside of the file system. So put in the implementation file here. Actually, I was debating whether or not to use like extern or static or something in here. Uh, right now, I'll probably just go with regular ones, you know, regular variable definitions here. But I'm going to have something for a current directory um, or maybe a current working directory. But I'll just spell it out so I don't have to think about reading it later. But current directory and maybe an inode for that current directory. So let's just say current dir and we'll have an inode and I'm making these pointers for a reason. Although this doesn't have to be a pointer, this can be a regular one, but we'll have to set the state to it later. Uh, I'll just make it a regular inode. So I can't name them the same thing. I can say current directory inode or something like that, or a verbose thing. So this I want to be the string, right? The current working directory uh, string. That's why it's a pointer. I'm gonna, in the kernel, probably just malloc like a thousand characters or some something that's guaranteed to be long enough for like long file paths later. So if we're, you know, we'll start out in root. So this will be the initial string for that. And if we go into a folder, it'll turn into, um, let's say we do like CD folder A, then that would go to root folder A, you know, so on and so forth. I may or may not end with a slash to dictate, hey, it's a, a a directory there, but I might do something like that. That's the current working directory. String in the current directory inode will be inode for current working directory. We'll just have those here in the FS implementation file. I'll probably use those in the kernel. I guess I could make these extern actually and only define them truly in the kernel. That way, I think the only other file using this is the third stage bootloader, and we're not going to be using that in there, although maybe we could set it up and pass it to the kernel, but no. I'll just, we'll say we'll use those in the kernel. I think that's okay. It's not going to complain about unused variables, even though technically those are saying, I don't know, there's missing, uh, <laughs> whatever they call them, symbols, like in the object file, but that's, that's fine. Um, okay, so if those are there, let's go into the kernel. Let's see where we set things up, like for the open file table. Or actually call it here. I'll set it up before then, I guess. And I also need the variables to be there, right? But I can put them in line here. It's probably all right. So this means it'll be external. If I define them within a function, will it still be in the global scope? Because these are technically global, but they're extern. I might need to make them global, I'm not sure. Like if I use them within this implementation header file. I'm not sure. If I do like fs test, and I just set current directory equal to t, which isn't going to do anything. I just want to test that out there. That's not defined. So I just want to define it within the kernel here. And I'll say character star current directory. And that's going to be a malloc, kernel malloc. But let's just say 1024. 1024 bytes for the current working directory. And I'll string copy into current directory. I'll just say the string root will start off at, at root. I kind of do want the inode for that though, and the inode would be the root inode, which might already be in memory, I don't remember. But I just want to see if I can use this value here, which I probably can't, but maybe. Undefined reference. Yeah, okay, so it is undefined there, that's what I thought. So it's not going to be able to see that because that's in the kernel main thing. Okay, so it has to be global. Well, I guess that's all right. Maybe I won't make it extern then. <laughs> uh, we'll just have them be regular. That's that's fine. All right. Start in root directory. We'll start over there. And on the right up here, a couple other things I'm going to do. 
Let's have a, a temporary sector that we can write to. Sectory. Let's have a temp block, the size of a block from the file system. So these I'm going to make byte addressable sort of pointers. They're going to be arrays. So I guess I'll have an array in, in global memory. That's fine. Um, or at least externally addressable memory, however you say that. This will be FS sector size, I think. I don't remember. I need to set up like tags or C tags so I can just have access to these things easier. Yeah, FS sector size, which is 512, but that's all right. So this will be a temporary working sector, right? Just for a uh, file use. And a block will be as big as a block size. Because I'm going to be reading and writing sectors a lot, and this will be easy if I have to like update the current, update the root directory inode and the data blocks within that inode. It'd be good if I could load the inode to a guaranteed location in memory, like the temporary sector here and then go and change the inode data and write it back to disk. Like, I'll be doing a lot of little things like that, so... I'll need some, some guaranteed place where it can be at would be easy on me. So I'll just do that. Temporary work sector and block. And a block is eight sectors by default. So, okay, kernel's back at six. Is that all right? Is that bad? That's all right so far. I need to load the root directory to that, to some place, or I need some place that's guaranteed static for the root directory so I can just always have it available, which I think I do in the super block. I thought I had a location to that, or that might just be what block it's at. Because I have the first inode in data. I have a root inode pointer. Do I set that up? I don't. Um... Root inode pointer. I don't remember if I set that up or not. That's in make disk. That's just filled at runtime from the kernel. Oh, well, I guess I'm not doing that. Third stage does the first inode address. Root inode pointer. Okay, so the pointer is just the 32T. I don't remember where I did these things, so. I'm setting that equal to the first inode address plus the size of an inode. That's fine. Am I doing anything with that? No, I'm just setting it there. Okay, so I might set up a place in memory for that, which would just be a permanent inode for the root directory. I might do that and then set it at runtime from the kernel. I think that would be a better choice because this isn't used anywhere in this file anyway. I'll just comment that out for now. Probably say not needed here. Can set in kernel. Yeah, we'll just do that. Okay. Implementation B8. So I can set something there as well. And it is a pointer, but I'll just have it be Another area in memory, like the current directory. This will only be for root, though, so it could be current. It could be a, a constant, even. Well, but we'll be changing the data within it. Yeah, that's, that's fine. This will be root inode. Site permanent. Uh, or static. A static place to put root. File data, root directory data, I guess. Or just root directory, that's fine, okay. So we should have that, that should be there. What am I doing? Set up initial file system variables, I guess I'll say. And if these are going to be within FS impl, I could just make another thing here. Another helper function, so I'll do that. I'll do init file system vars or something. That's fine. Which means I'll need it up here with the other ones. Let's 
be forward function declarations. Void init file system vars. And I'll just put it above here. Just to see if it, okay. I'm trying to see if things get made so I don't have too many errors pile up over time, but that's all right. Or initialize, yeah, all right. We'll call that. Put that sucker over there. We'll malloc 1024. Let's be set starting size of current working directory string. And it'll be in there starting in root directory. So the root inode, I want to be within the root inode. So if I have like this, I want that to equal some value here. And that may have to be loaded from disk or it may already be in where the disk is at. But do I have this here? I have the first inode address, which root should be that. Plus one, because I think zeros for invalid inodes I have there and other error stuff later. That's a B000 by default, but I could just load it um, I might load it at runtime here just to be sure. I like comments being auto made there. So I can do read write sectors. I could load into temp sector. But I need, I don't know what I need. It's the only time I use that there, really? Okay. I don't remember what I need for these. The size and sectors, we'll just have one sector. Starting sector will be be the first inode block, I believe. Yeah, the first inode block, which is the data block on the disk that has the inodes, the actual inode data. And it'll be wherever the root directory is, which is one. So it should be plus one sector. But blocks are in uh, eight sector chunks, so I would have to probably multiply that by eight to convert it to a sector and then add one. The load root inode always, the root is always inode one. Okay. We have the size and sectors, the starting sector. The address we want to load it to and read or write. Well, we'll do read or write. The address I want to load it to would be that temporary sector we set up. So I can set it into there. And the command will be read with retry. Okay. I need to get a pointer, or I can say the root inode will be the data from an inode t pointer to temp sector. So we'll cast that plus one, right? Let's just double that up just to be safe. So sec temp sector is at a character or one byte size, you know, offsetting. We'll change that to an inode t size, get an inode amount of data. We'll go by one because root is always at inode one, not zero. And then I'll take that data and put it into the root inode, which is defined within the file system implementation file, and that should be okay. And I'll set, in case I need it, I don't know why I need it at this point, but I'll set the root inode pointer equal to, I should make it just a pointer, not an address, but right now it's still just, or I should make it a pointer, not an int, but right now I think it's still an int, so we'll do that. So we'll do that, okay. That should be okay. So we have the current directory there. So what else was in? I don't remember, what else did I have here? <laughs> Temp sector block, the current directory inode. The inode for the current directory. Yeah, we can set that as well. So let's do this. Let's load that first and then we'll set 
Set file system starting point. So we're starting in the root directory and we'll set the current directory inode equal to the root inode. Yeah, there we go. That should be all right. Those are set up. And then we also have the file table and open inode table set up. Uh, one block equals eight sectors. So that should be okay. That doesn't work. Super block undeclared. First use. Oh, I don't have it declared in there. Interesting. Okay, I'll put that in the file system as well. Should have it already here, right? Where's impl? B8. Let's say super block T super block equals something. We could even just make it a pointer and fill that out at runtime as well. Or I could have it be global and in that memory. Hmm. Because I know we have a super block address, which it should already be loaded here on boot. This would just be loading it again or copying it from there to a different address, but it'd be better to not have this hard coded everywhere, I think. Have it be like dynamic when the kernel's loaded, that might be better. We'll just say prevent indirection right now. We'll do that. So this isn't being able to be used. Let's say. Well, we have super block now, so we can do that. Okay, so that's fine. Invalid, because it's not a pointer. I know I can use make within vim, but I like the color highlighting here sometimes. <laughs> Still doesn't like 828. What did I not what did I not do? Oh, super block, yeah. So that's not filled out though if I do it like this. I would have to fill that out. Okay. Load super block from the super block address. So I could set the data. Um, yeah, let's do that. Super block P. Yeah, it's super block address. There we go. Load super block state. Load root inode. Okay. Uh, Python argument three makes integer from pointer without a cast. Oh, you went 32. I, I should make that a pointer. Why is that not a pointer? <laughs> the only place read write sectors right now is being used, I believe, is in third stage. Or make disk. Well, one of the two. Am I using read write sectors in here? No. So third stage. This would be seven. Read write sectors. And I'm using scratch block address. It's the only time. That's the only time I'm using it. Okay, I'm gonna make that a pointer because that just makes more sense to me. I think passing a pointer as an address. Otherwise, it's just making me confused. So within this file, see, I'm getting a pointer to it anyway. And these functions down here, I'm not really gonna use anymore. I'm changing the file system implementation. I don't think that'll be too bad. Let's get rid of that so I can read the whole thing. So let's do that. I can even make it a void pointer address. So it could be whatever. But I probably want it to be, to be technically byte addressable. So character pointer should be okay. Or unsigned character pointer. UN8. Character pointer should only be for strings, really. 
So this should still work, and that would be okay. But... Is there a way to fuzzy search these <laughs> so I don't have to keep like looking through and open? I think there is. Don't know what it is. Don't know what it is. So instead of this, we would be sending UNAT pointer to this address. Or I can keep doing this. And then in the kernel, when I load read write sectors, you can just send the temp sector. And it doesn't like that. Uh, UNAT. Oh, temp sector I made. Yeah. Character pointer. I didn't want to do that. Yeah, these. Let's make these UNAT's. They're byte addressable. It really doesn't like that though. What don't you like about this stupid crap? <laughs> it's a pointer to a pointer? Oh, because it's an array? That's, I guess that's fair. That's fair. These are arrays. I'm not tired, you're tired. <laughs> U and 32T, that is address plus address offset. I gotcha. That's fair. That's completely fair. What is the first thing that it's yelling about? In disk file ops. Oh, where I'm read writing sectors for everything else. Okay. Maybe I don't want to do this right now. <laughs> I have a lot of refactoring I'm, I'm doing. Hopefully that's okay there. I mean, that just makes more sense for that to be a pointer though, doesn't it? I think it does. Although we could say, yeah, I mean, if it's a fixed address, maybe not. We're saying the address can be up to UN32, whatever. I'll just change it back. Maybe I'll cut this out of the video. <laughs> uh, I'll just change it back. We'll just change it back. Too much headache, not gonna worry about it. Not gonna worry about it. And it's only affected in the kernel. Um, sector. Well, that would still be there. I mean, we could pass. This isn't gonna work, right? Cause that's sending an array. Yeah. So technically that's sending a pointer instead of the address. So I would have to, Set this to a uint32, which is converting that pointer to its sort of value and sending that. That's why I kind of wanted to make it an address, because that's kind of weird, in my opinion. But I don't know. I mean, that still works. It just looks a little odd from all the casting. Um, it still boots, so we're good to go. That's all that matters, right? <laughs> Okay, so that sets up everything here initially. Stuff that I kind of wanted. Stuff that will be changing according to values later, like change directory, making directories, stuff like that. But I wanted to deal with open. So what else do I need for open? Make stuff to resolve a relative path and traverse the path and grab the last inode. Okay. And if the inode doesn't exist, we check that stuff. So that will also be within our implementation file. I need to do that. Let's put that down here. This will be, I guess we could return the path. Maybe as a pointer, but I don't want to return a pointer because it'll be, you know, local automatic storage, which will go out of scope. So I could set it. I could set it and forget it. within this function. We say resolve path given like a starting path. Maybe you will say that can't change. Pointer can, but that can't. Resolve path, we'll say resolve relative path. 
If that's what it's doing. To actual values. Or we could just say we traverse a path and we resolve it as we go. Like that would be fine, and then we wouldn't need a separate thing. Would this be useful, like to have a function later? What In what situation would we need to convert, like, you know, these things to the actual name? I guess if I do change directory, it would have to convert to this, but we could just walk it and get the name and then set the name. I'm trying to think, would this be a useful function to have? Because we need something to just, like, convert or get in. Get last inode from path. We need something like this. Like if we have folder A file B, we need to return file B's inode. Would this be useful there? Do I even need a function for this? I'm not sure. Because we'd be traversing a path and converting it anyway, and walking the list and getting the inode and walking the list, and we could set a name as we do that. Like if we want to reset the current working directory, if we want to set that name, we'll have to do it within here anyway, right? So I don't think I need this. It'll be resolving it as it goes. But if I need it later, I can add it later. That's fine. We'll say git, git final, or git inode from path. Maybe I don't need to put get or set, get last inode in given path. This would take in. This could return an inode, either a pointer or just an inode itself. We'll see if we need to do that later. And it would take in a, a path, you know, start path or file path, starting path. So if we're given a path, we will need to check. I mean, we'll have to start at the root and we'll have to kind of traverse each thing there. Although what if they give it a relative path? So if we're in like folder A already, if, if our structure is like root, well, let's say our structure is root and then folder A and then folder B and then folder A has file C and we're given to this function the path, we're in folder B, let's say, CWD current working directories folder B and we give this function the path dot dot slash file C. So how do we do that? Well, we know where we're starting. So I guess we'll have to check if we're starting with dot or dot dot and resolve as we go along. That seems useful until we get to the end of this path here. And it'll be a string, so it should be null delimited. So I guess we'll loop until we check for that. Okay, yeah, I can do that. So while starting pat, well, that would be changing the data there, wouldn't it? Let's have something else. Let's do this. Character, I don't know, position. <laughs> Say that'll equal starting path. So while the data at position is not null, we want to traverse this string. So traverse path, resolving relative uh, references as needed. Uh, walking down each inode and resolving relative references as needed. Yeah, okay. So we could also switch on this, right? But let's just say if if it's a dot, or if it's a dot, dot. If it's a dot, it's the current directory. We can just skip past it. That doesn't matter. We're not going to be changing the current inode that we're looking at if it's just a dot. So that's fine. Um, we could say continue as well, but eh, we'll just do that. If position is dot, dot. Of course, we need to see if the next one ends or not, right? Well, that's why it increases. Okay, yeah. 
then it would be a dot, and it would be a dot again. <laughs> so maybe this doesn't work. If position is dot, and position plus one is a null, so we're only given the current directory, or we're given another directory after that. If it's zero, let's do this. I guess this reads, this might read easier in position one. So position zero is a dot and one is a null or one is a slash. And I'll increment by one. Well, if it's if it's a null, I'll increment by one. If it's a slash, I guess I'll increment again. So we'll need to get a name and search for things after the slash as well, but that's all right. I'm trying to think how to do this in like a general way that looks better. <laughs> that's not great. Uh, relative current directory. Relative parent directory, so if we have a dot. We might also have to start at root if the first position is like root, so I might, uh, I might have to do that as well. Uh, let's see, special case starting at root. We'll do this. Let's set like an inode in here that we're currently working at. Ooh, that sucks. So set current traversing directory to root. Which that's what I called up here, right? Current, no, it's current directory. Well, this naming's not great. <laughs> Current inode is root inode. We'll just set that. And that's what we can return at the end as well. We'll just have a case for this. If zero is a dot and one is a slash, we'll do plus plus. That's fine. But if zero is a dot and one's a directory, which I need to double up on that. And we'll do plus equal two, I guess, and we'll get ready to set the next directory. Okay. We could have a special case for this parent directory. We'd have to get the parent directory where we're currently at. How do I know what parent directory is set? I guess I use the current working directory. Because that would be implicit. So the current working directory up here should be set. That, that would be the string here, and the inode for that string. So if we know we're given the current working directory and its inode, we should be able to figure out the parent directory. Maybe, probably not. <laughs> we might need that set separately. Um, I might set that separately. Let's say we have current directory current parent inode or directory. I'll need to get the name though, right? I'm traversing a string. But I guess, I guess it doesn't matter because we won't have to set the string in the middle because we know we're ending up at a given thing. Like if we have stuff in here like dot, 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 it doesn't matter what these are as long as we end up with file B. We don't care what these are as string values in this function. So I 
think that'll be okay. But we need to know what the parent directory is. So when we start out, until we do a change directory, it's not going to matter, really. When we start out in root, we won't have a parent directory. So current parent inode will be, you know, zero. Well, actually, we could set the parent of root is root, isn't it? The current and parent of root. Yeah, so we could do that. Then that'll fix some bugs, unless we, do, unless we don't do that. So root's parent is itself. OK. We need to go to the parent directory, so I know and this would be string, let's say compare. Pair position dot dot two. That's zero, they're equal, so position plus equal three, because it'll probably be it'll probably be either a null or a slash here. This needs to be not backslash actually. This needs to be a regular slash. <laughs> This will be, yeah, either null or a slash for the next directory. So if we go by two, um, we could just increment by two, actually. Well, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll increment by two. If it's a null, then it'll be caught here. If not, then we'll increment again. So we'll just do that. Or what I could do is just have a case here. So we'll say skip directory divider or delimiter separator. Okay, that way if the next one's it doesn't matter. Yeah, this this will be fine. We'll just do plus plus if it's here. We would have to check if the last one is a dot. If it exists, otherwise. So this would be okay. I could also do continue for here. Just to be explicit, let's do that. So if we know this is a slash, this doesn't really matter. Because that'll be caught at the thing above, so we can do that. Yeah, I mean, we could do continue for both of these, just... I don't know. A little repetitive. That's all right. As long as it makes more sense. So if here we'll do plus equal two. It's a slash. I mean, we can just do continue here. It doesn't really matter. Because that'll be caught up above. I probably should do continue for all these if I'm doing this. It's just a lot of repetition. So we'll see. If I have one of these that doesn't end in a continue then we do need this. If they all end and continue, that doesn't really matter as long as these are all exclusive, and I don't know if they will be, so that's fine. So if we have the relative parent directory, we're moving up one, we would need to get that directory's parent directory. That I don't know how to do. <laughs> Actually, I'm back at square one for this. I do need to set the current inode, though, and that would be the, the parent's inode. Current parent inode. How long am I recording for? 42? This is not a great video. That's okay. <laughs> Probably stopping about 18, 20 minutes. Okay, so we would actually have to set new parent inodes and everything for this, I think. So it's kind of annoying. Let's do parent inode. Relative parent directory, we have to go up by one. So current parent inode needs to equal something here. So how do I set that? Well, I have to be loading some things. And that's why we have these temp sectors and blocks up here. So what I can do is let's get one sector for the parent's inode, I guess, because the ID should be stored dot dot is a directory entry in the current directory. We should be able to look through the data blocks of the current directory inode. 
which would be loading a block actually, which might be eight here, until we find it. So the directory has, you know, if we're in root and root has a bunch of files, and then, you know, maybe folder C has files of its own down here or something. Um, all of these values, except for root, root will have dot and dot dot though. So we'll say this is the root directory here. And then as these things in folder C somehow, you know, we'll just say contains file D. All of these values are strings inside of the name portion of a directory entry inside of the data blocks of the root inode. So on disk in the data, all these things are strings, right? So we'll have to look through the strings for the current directory with the current directory inode and stuff. And we'll have to see where the string equals dot dot. <laughs> And we'll have to get the ID from that directory entry. And then we can load that inode to memory and then start looking through its stuff as we traverse this path. I think that's what needs to happen here. Uh, but okay. That looks bad with that comment separator there. So I need to load its data blocks to memory. So we need to read eight because eight sectors in a block. And current directory inode, which is a thing up here, right? Current directory inode. So the starting directory would be um, super block is not a pointer. No, it would be the data block. I think I have first data block, and the super the super block. I have first data block. Yeah, so that's the first data block that we have. So I'll need to add on to that some offset for this value, right? Or wait, no, I don't need to do that because I can look through the current directory inode, which is not a pointer, right? I know I'm all over the place right now. Sorry about that. <laughs> this is very hard to try to think through off the top of my head. So this has an extent. So we would need to look through all of the extents to sort of find this function so we could make a helper function to like find a string within a file stuff that would probably be helpful so i'm writing it in line here and it's not going to work very well and i know the extent has a block and it'll be the first block and that will be the block on the disk should be the block on the disk so i have to multiply by eight to convert that to a sector i want to read that to an address we'll say our temp sector, or we could even just read the whole block in, is it the data block? So times eight sectors would be eight, yeah, sectors. So we'll read that into block actually. And read with retry. So not great, but that is all right. Right now we shouldn't have anything past the first data block for a directory, there's not that many you know, stuff in the files, but this needs to be replaced. So let's say replace with helper function call to return block or sector containing, or even we're trying to find an inode, right? Let's say return inode or parent directory. We'll say the function will be given the current directories inode. Well, given current directory inode. It'll search through the data blocks. We'll say this is okay right now. I don't want to think through that at the moment. Let's say we had an example signature though. We need the parent directory given the current. Let's say equals parent directory. Okay, parent directory inode given the current directory inode. That'll be a function signature sort of later. But if we read in the block to the temporary block, we can look through the data blocks here. 
Yeah, we can look through the temporary block with a directory entry. So we can have a directory entry T pointer, say directory entry, which equals directory entry T pointer to, um, to temp block. So we have that data now. We'll just take, you know, this many bytes with this context from that block and we'll search for this string up here. The two dots string, which should be the second entry. So really, we should be able to like multiply by two or add two. Or maybe just add one even, because zero would be the first offset. And the first offset should be dot. So the second should be dot dot. But I'll just check within here. I don't have that. Do I have? Yeah. Write data blocks. Root directory will be the first. We have these two. That's the only thing we have. But the first thing that I'm going to add when I make a directory later on, like a make directory command, just like in Linux, you know, sorry, AL, we're going to have, that's good, that's a bad thing that I need to delete. We're going to have dot and dot dot as the first two entries. So zero, this won't be there, so we should be able to remove that. Okay, so this would be at offset zero inside of the data block for directory entries. And this should be at offset one, the size of a directory entry, which is all this info, right, effectively. We should just be able to add one and get the ID for that, which for root is going to be parent, but if it's at like a deeper file, then it's, it should, its parent should have the ID at this directory entry. That's what I'm trying to get at here, very roundabout way. First two entries, first two directory entries are always dot and dot dot, dot dot. It's thus an offset one. Let me just do this to make more sense, get rid of that highlighting. I think that makes sense. The directory entry ID is going to be the parent for the parent. That'll be the parent inodes ID. So I can load its inode from the inode blocks, which I can locate from the super block, which gives us the first inode block. These things are like matryoshka, right? Nested Russian dolls. Nest, yeah. <laughs> Nested, yeah. Russian dolls, I guess. That's the way you say that. Whatever. That sounds wrong, but... We have the first inode block here, which is the first base we can go off of. Okay. And I didn't remember how big an inode was. How big is an inode? It should be 64 bytes, right? Size of inode T is 64. So there's eight of those. Yeah, two is 128 times four is 512. So there's eight inodes in a sector. I know we loaded a block, but I'll be loading to a sector soon, I believe. This directory entry ID. So load parent inode. I'm going to do read write sectors again. We're going to write one sector. Or maybe a block. There's five inodes in a sector, though, so we should only need one sector. So we'll go super block first inode block. And we need a certain offset from that first block. And that offset will be the ID number of the inode. That'll be the inode's offset in the bitmap, and it's offset in the inode blocks. So that'll be OK. So we need to convert the directory entry ID you know, to the right sector in these blocks. I know the ID. We know there's eight inodes in one sector, and there's eight sectors in a block. So I think if I divide the ID, this is very hard to test. I don't know how I'm going to do this. If we divide the ID by eight, that should give the starting sector that we're in. OK, yeah, yeah, that should give the starting sector that we're in. But that sector would be an offset from the start of all the sectors of all the inodes. So I should be able to multiply 
the inode block times eight. So we'd get the, the absolute disk sector value where the inode blocks start, and then we'll get the disk sector value or the inode that we're looking for. So we'll offset into that or from that. Okay, I think that makes sense. And that'll be a sector value. So that'll be the starting sector on the disk. We're only reading one. I'll put that into our temp sector. And we'll do read with retry again. Okay. So load parent inode from disk. Well, we'll just say load load parent inode. Um, let's do eight inode IDs in one sector offset from start of all inode sectors on disk. Okay, so that gets us the point where the sector is at. So temp sector points to the sector that contains the inode, but not the inode. So the actual inode itself, so get inode from sector would be the inode data at temp sector offset by a certain amount. Let's just put this double here to be safe. And that amount would be the ID modulo eight, right? So this gets us the start of the sector, but the sector or the inode itself will be that value modulo eight. So if we have like inode ID, I don't know, 17, it's not, let's give a high value. Let's give like 72 or something. That's the, that divides by eight evenly. We'll do 73 or five. <laughs> Some value like that. So 75 divided by 8 uh, is going to be 9 and 3 eighths, right? But it'll round to 0 because these are all int values, so it'll be 9. So we'll get sector 9 offset from the start of the inode blocks, whatever that is. Let's say it's like 40. So that'll be ultimately sector 49. Minor 49. -er. Then we want to get the actual one within that sector. So if we do 75 modulo 8, it'll be 3 because it's 9 and 3 eighths. So then we offset three sectors into, or from, we don't offset three sectors, sorry. <laughs> this is the start of all the inodes in the sector. This is what temp sector is loaded to. So we want to get an offset to the right inode within that sector. So three would be the number of inodes within that sector, according to its ID. So that's confusing. Hopefully that makes a little bit of sense, because it almost doesn't to me. <laughs> I'm getting the right inode within that sector. I'm getting the data for that inode, setting it to the parent inode. I think that makes sense. Yeah, the current is the current parent. And we're setting the new parent because we're going up a date. Or is this the right way to do this? <laughs> I could set us to that and we won't have a parent inode. Maybe I don't need a parent inode in this one. Because actually we're moving two up the chain, so we don't. We can just set the current inode to that. Yeah, okay. Okay, and then we have to continue. Position goes to, if it's a slash, it's a separator. If not, then we're done. Okay. So if it's not a dot or a dot dot, what do we have to do there? So not relative current working directory get next uh, full name and load its inode. So I would also have to do this if we encounter something with a slash that isn't one of these two. If we don't have a file, <laughs> but we're on a slash. Oh, that's not good because I'm skipping that. Mm. But we could load its inode and check if it's a directory. Or not. I don't know. <laughs> well, we know we're on... If we keep going down the path, we know we hit a directory, actually, so that's okay. Yeah, that'll be all right. We know this is a directory. We know current's a directory. 
Other than that, we have a file or we have a directory, and if we keep having to go down this path with separators for each directory, then we know we have a directory anyway. Okay. So I might have to copy this code here until we make a, an abstracted function, but that is all right. Or I can write it with just this data here, but running through more extents. That'll be okay. Uh, we'll have to loop over all extents. Data blocks and inode. I'll just put that there. Note. Get next full name and load its inode. I suppose we'll need a name here, uh, which I could set within the while loop. That's probably fine. So we'll set it to the current position. So if we have something like folder A, folder B, and we're going on to folder B, say we're you know getting the name here, the name will start wherever this is, right? Because position should be on F because we skipped the initial thing there. So we should be here. I might want to increase them both then until we reach the next. Well, I'll have to store the name though. Trying to think, I could have an array and add these characters to an array, or I can keep going, say, you know, our name, we leave the name at the start, and when we reach the next separator, I'll have to replace it with a null to have the name be null terminated, and then we'll have to search for that like we're doing up here, except instead of dot dot, we'll have to search for the actual name. Well, that'll be fun. I might do that, because <laughs> this has been going on for over an hour, I might do that on the next one and leave this at a very boring cliffhanger of giving myself a headache because I don't know what I'm doing, so. <laughs> Might have to do that. Might have to do that. So we'd have like a mini while loop until we reach that. We'd have while position not equal this, position plus plus, well, and null. Not equal null. Then we know, we know, um, not position, continue. Of course, it'll break after we reach that anyway. So it could just break there at that point, but we need to return the inode. Next full name. Okay, so we know if we end on a null at this point, then we have the file that we want to return. It's not another directory. If we don't end on a null, we know it's a directory. So really, I can grab the inode here, get inode, and then if star position equals this, search current inode. Uh, data blocks for directory entry name equaling star name. Okay, because we'll know it's a directory at that point. Name is a directory. Doing star just so I remember it's a pointer. So we know that. We know name's a directory. Then we'll search the current inode for directory name equals star name. Okay, I'm gonna do that on the next one and continue, and I'll try to be a little bit better and a little bit more succinct. Had some stuff going on lately, you know. I was definitely not on call and getting a very bad lack of sleep for the past few days, and I definitely did not have my HVAC system poop itself and have to replace parts, and it's not freezing, but it is kind of chilly where I'm at. So that's my excuse this week for wearing three layers <laughs> in the winter. But yeah, so yeah, I'll do that on the next one. Again, sorry, sorry for these, these past two have been like pretty bad and boring as I try to work this out. And it's not been working out too well, but that's okay. Hopefully this, is, hopefully this gives like a little bit of a hint <laughs> for traversing a directory. This would probably be really, really simple if I didn't have to talk and I worked this out like, you know, in the shower in five minutes in my head and then wrote it down tomorrow morning. It's just hard right now for some reason, but tomorrow it'll be easy within the first like 20 minutes of getting up. It's usually how that works, but yeah, I'll have to, I'll have to think about this some more. Um, I probably will want to start with 
abstracting this and then just reading through, returning a string, just take in a string for the dot dots so it can be generic. And then the string down here would be the name as I replace this with the null. Um, we'll just say get inode and replace current character with null if slash. Okay. Yeah, so I will do that. We could return a parent directory, just have that. Um, let's do this. To do make additional function, make additional function, I know for given string. Given a uh, Given the current directory inode, well, current inode. So this would be inode t. Um, I don't know, get inode from <laughs> current inode. That, that doesn't make much sense. Date, I would rename this, but. I'll make it very verbose so I know what I'm talking about tomorrow. Get inode from current inode data blocks, given string to search for. That's not ambiguous at all. All right, so that's, I'll try to do that on the next part. Sorry for making these long and meandering and not getting very much done, trying to think things through badly and not really doing it that well, but that's all I'm gonna have for this, so. Thanks for watching. This will probably be around two hours, a little bit over, that I'll have to edit down, because I added on to the end of the last one because I felt bad for that. Now I feel bad for this, but that's okay. I need to not feel so bad. So yeah, we'll continue on the next. I'll try to reverse things, set current directory, get it printing in the kernel or something so we have something to show and try to open a file, finish that syscall thing a bit. That might be after the next one because I'll have to make something to create a file and that'll be probably a pretty long process. So that might be its whole video on its own. We'll see, anyway, I'll see you then. Thank you for watching, appreciate it. And uh, yeah, cheers, drink mas agua. Es bueno por vida.